Welcome back. We're here to talk Kill Zone Mercenary. I'm here with Tom Jones. He's the art director on this game. And let me just say something. This is the most stunning looking mobile game I've ever <laughs> seen. I mean, Thanks, truly. Man. Thank you. I, I was telling a story. You know, we're, we're going to get some live feed going here. But one of the things about this game, if you see it on a TV, you could be fooled into thinking it was Kill Zone 3 on PS3. How did you guys do that? Well, uh, to be honest, I mean, that was kind of one of the aims. We wanted to. Look at this. Live up to the standards that have been set by the previous games. Um, and I think one of the, the ways we did it, we actually took the engine from Killzone 3 and, and kind of lifted the hood and tweaked that to get the most out of the Vita. Uh, and that gave us the groundwork to kind of really push the fidelity. And that and speaking of fidelity, though, I got to point out the fact that this game is running at the native resolution of PS Vita. That is not something that you see done often, especially. No, it's, not. it's a big deal. Not on something this spectacular with the kind of textures and lighting and animation system you guys have going. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really is a technical feat, and it plays great too. There's a lot of love that's gone into it, and you, you know, you can see it kind of holds up on the big screen and it holds up on the big projectors. So I, I think we've ticked a lot of boxes. Um, now, how long have you guys been working on uh, Mercenary? It's a couple of years now, so. Yeah. You know, it's, I think you can see that a lot of time has been spent on it and a, a, yeah, a lot of effort has been put into it as well. One of the things I like, uh, I've gotten a little bit of hands-on time with the game, is it actually does a good job with the touch screen. Uh, it's a double tap on the back to, to sprint, yep. on the rear yep. touch pad to sprint, which I think is a great way to do it on PS Vita. But then they also, the, the way Melee works, talk to me a little bit about how Melee uses the, the front touch screen on PS Vita. What we've done, we've got this system called Brutal Melee, that's good timing from Mike yeah. there, just did one. Basically, whenever you go up to a, a, an enemy soldier, you can, it will give you a context to either tap on the screen or press a button. A lot of our interactions can either be touch or buttons, just in case people have a preference. Um, but then what it will do, it will give you a kind of gestural input, like a, a directional arrow, and you just swipe the screen and then it will do a move kind of corresponding to that direction. Uh, but we've tried quite hard with the, the touch inputs to make sure that they're intuitive and not too invasive. I know a lot of people have been concerned that they were going to be gimmicky or kind of just chucked at it for the sake of it. We've not done that. Like at its core, it's a twin stick first person shooter and anything extra is because we felt it enhances the gameplay experience, not just for the sake of it. So. Now, speaking of extra, one of the things that I think also does a great job using the, the Vita's touch screen and touch functionality is the Vanguard system. Tell me a little bit about this and some of the new abilities you're able to get thanks to that. Yeah, sure. Well, one of the things we wanted to do, actually, because it's a Vita, we kind of almost wanted to put a Vita on the mercenary's arm in game um, and build it around the idea that this is your tactical armament system. Uh, and so we've created these new things called Vanguard uh, weaponry. And basically, they're just some kind of toys of death. So Mike's got a, a porcupine equipped at the moment, uh, which is like a, a shoulder-mounted rocket launcher. Do it. Well, we'll do it took the zip line. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> what that does, it will um, basically it will, uh, it'll select a lot of enemy characters when they're on screen, and you can use the touch screen to tap them. Uh, so we've got a, a drone that flies around and stabs people in the head. Oh, that's my favorite. And you can and there's actually there's little spots around the map if you look carefully, little vents that that Mantis yeah, drone yeah, yeah. can zip through, kind of a stealth kind of drone, but then you come up and you and you, and you sort of pincher these guys' heads, no, it's very a, satisfying. It's a good point, actually. A lot of the maps, we tried to design the levels so that they are, you, you can play them in different ways. So actually, if you want to stealth the map, you can do that, and you can customize your loadout to get that experience. Or if you want to go around all guns blazing, you can do that as well. And they're slightly more arena-based than just a linear progression through the level. That is a great point, and, and that's reflected in the weapons. I mean, Killzone is usually a pretty full-on affair. This game definitely gives you, I think, more, empowers you more due to the weapon loadouts and some of the equipment and the Vanguard yeah. abilities you have. For instance, we're seeing silenced weapons. We're seeing a lot of sniper-type weapons. You have this huge arsenal at your fingertips, but you got to deal with this guy, this weapons dealer named Blackjack. Talk to me yeah, a little yeah. bit about how all that works. So basically, Blackjack, he's... Um, He's our weapon stealer, as you say. And, and one of the key things, because you're a mercenary, the whole game is driven by the idea of cash and earning money. So you, you go where the contract's biggest. And you also earn money for kills and completing these contracts. But money's kind of useless unless you don't have anything to spend it on. So hence why we created a lot of new weapons, a lot of new kind of Vanguard items, it's different armor and stuff. And you can buy all of these things right from the start. We don't unlock them as the game goes on. They're all available. It just depends which one you want to buy. So. So you can buy the silent sniper rifle, or you can buy like the incendiary shotgun. Um, and what's really cool is that's persistent through single player and multiplayer. It's like a cohesive wrapper for the whole game. So whatever you buy in single player, you can use in multiplayer as well. So I think it's kind of a really nice feature. Yeah, one of the things I noticed when I played, I, I, 
Blackjack is more than just buying weapons. He's buying ammo and grenades. Yeah, yeah. That that brings a very different feel to some of the fights in this game. There was there was one battle I was in where I fought this massive dude in this huge heavy armor suit, and I was hiding in a bar, and yeah. he like busted the door down and came in. And I was it was this cat and mouse game because I had this this weapon, this SMG. It was very powerful, really high rate of fire. Yeah very small ammo count so I was exhausting my ammo very quickly right, yeah. and I had and I had to really be very cautious about when I would fire at him and, and when I finally got through with him I was able to get some more ammo from blackjack but it really I think blackjack is more than just sort of a vendor it I think it helps the pacing of the actual action in the game sometimes too it makes you think a little bit differently yeah definitely I think it's, it's we wanted to try and do something a bit different I mean it's still a, at its heart a kill zone experience but we wanted to make sure that it had something unique to it as well and the fact that it's on a different bit of hardware i think gave us the opportunity to do that and, and blackjack's a great volley for, for kind of introducing some of those mechanics now yeah. is it fair to say you uh killzone mercenary has the biggest arsenal of any killzone game it yeah. sure seems like it to me based yeah, on yeah, what there's I, a lot oh there's something like i don't know something crazy like thirty thousand odd permutations of different loadouts it's like because yeah, there's, there's mods and, and and things like that as well right there's different ways you can enhance your weapons uh well they're kind of already there's just a lot of different weapons okay. that have already got you know, they're all balanced together. And one, I think one of the things we were really, I, I know the, the lead designer was really mindful of was if a gun was too powerful, was not to make that less powerful. It was like, okay, that's cool. Let's make the other guns more, yeah. you know, to bring them all up to the same level. So you have that kind of positive reinforcement. So they're all fun weapons. And that's a great point, you know, and that was something I noticed when I played Killzone Mercenary. I've played it a couple of times now. I've, I've really enjoyed myself. Um, the weapons have more punch. I don't know what it is, but I feel like that the, the, they do more damage. Like I feel like they're just—it's more satisfying in this sure. game. I, I don't know why. Maybe it's because you, you, do you guys kind of look at the play styles of somebody kind of in a mobile environment? Do you tweak accordingly for, for that on Vita? I think I think that you know to be honest, there's just been a lot of kind of iteration throughout the course of the, the, the project and just tweaking it to get the right balance, the right feel, um, and particularly because there are more weapons. I think we've had to be probably make some feel more impactful and, and you know take people out in one shot because you need that range of kind of skill sets across them so that's maybe why some of them feel a bit more aggressive and there's less of the sort of traditional just progression i think as you see in a lot of single player games where you're getting better and better and better yeah. weapons as the game goes because here this game says here's a ton of guns yeah, which yeah. one do you want to choose no, exactly they're all kind of balanced and and, and so they they're all powerful and right. I, I really noticed that when i played right away it just felt satisfying like it's never felt better to shoot a hell gas Honestly, and I've loved the other two games, but this is actually, I, I want to say, the, the best kill zone I've played yet. Well, and it, it looks great, it I'll plays great, and I mean, just, it's these little things. It's not, it, it's the fact that you, you have to deal with a weapons vendor and, and get ammo and be careful with your grenades. Yeah, yeah. You're not, they're not just kind of being handed out to you. You, you. you have to kind of get to the next area or survive this fight to quickly load up and stock up. Now, one thing I want to point out, too, that's very different about Mercenary is you're fighting for both sides. Yep. Talk a little bit about how that kind of impacts the, the way that the game rolls out. So, I mean, you, you know, the key thing is because you're a mercenary, you go where the contract's biggest. Uh, and that was, a very, that was a very deliberate choice when we started designing the game. And it was one of the reasons is because it does allow you to see both sides of the war. So you fight for the ISA and you fight for the Hellgast and Killzone like Mercenary. Um, and actually, I think when you look into the backstory of the kind of Hellgast versus the ISA, there's quite there's, there's, there's really rich narrative running through it and there's a lot of depth and there's more to the, the universe than just you know black and white and right. like good and evil and we wanted to yep. maybe start to, to look at that so I think it's really interesting and that's something I get the sense that Killzone Shadowfall on PS4 is also going to be touching on I think it's very interesting because the Hellgast are very effective villains yeah. they're very menacing but if you kind of know that I'm not a true Killzone expert but if you know a bit about the backstory the ISA weren't necessarily, they didn't treat them the so well. They're not the nicest guys. They're no. not the nicest guys either. The, the, the Hellgas were kind of banished. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it, kind of, it kind of destroyed them. And that's part of what has sparked this feud. So I think it's very interesting to kind of see both sides. I mean, I was playing a mission where I was sort of helping out the Hellgas. It's just a very different side of the universe I don't think we've really seen yet. Talk to me a little bit about the environments too, because you'd be very involved with that. Sure. We're seeing parts of, of Hellgas that yep. we haven't seen. We're seeing parts environments in the world we haven't seen yet. Tell me about some of the, the places we're going to see in the game. So I think we were very um, very keen to create new experiences and new uh, new environments, like you say, for the player, particularly for us working on it as well. Like You have this amazing universe, you want to create new stuff, right? But we've also got uh, places that you'll have visited in Killzone 2 and 1. Um, but the cool thing 
obviously Killzone 1 was what, like 2004? Yeah. But things have moved on a lot, and, um, and actually doing Mercenary has allowed us to reimagine Vector in the way perhaps it should have been done. Well, not should have been done, perhaps we couldn't do back then. Right. And, and, you know, we've got more power and technology. Uh, so I think the, the Vector it takes place in, in the first couple of missions, and then you move back to uh, Helgen, and you go through um, Corinth River, where Killzone 2 starts off, and we take a look at some of the environment around there. And then this environment here is, is near that, but based out in the ocean, you're on these big kind of smoker stacks that have got this kind of mineral-rich smoke going through them, because it's like a mineral-rich planet, right? So everything's kind of a bit designed around mining and getting resources. Yeah, I found this area very particularly striking because you're seeing sort of an urban, or, 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 or urban sort of lower class environment with yeah. a lot of neon and just elements I've never really seen in the series so far. You must have had a field day getting, you know, your art director. You must have had a field day kind of designing all this. Yeah, this was a really kind of fun thematic to, to look at. And, you know, we took a lot of influences from, you know, like Tokyo and Hong Kong, places like that. Um, and we wanted to make sure that also that, you know, there was some color in the game as well, because it's such a lovely kind of crisp screen. It would be criminal to just have you know, something that's kind of brown and gray. So <laughs> hence a lot of the neon lights and things like that. Um, and the Hellgas alphabet actually works really well with that because it looks a bit like kind of uh, Japanese alphabet stuff as well. So yeah. yeah, this is kind of one of my favorite environments, I think. That's great. So Killzone Mercenary, we know it's got a full single player campaign yeah. here. This isn't just sort of a couple side quests and off no, you go in the multiplayer. Not at all. But obviously multiplayer, a big component for any Killzone game. I just want to touch on, on some of the, the, the offering you've got on the multiplayer yeah. side. So we have multiple modes. Can you just kind of walk me through the top level? Yeah, so we've got, we've got six maps to start with. Uh, it's 4v4, and so there's deathmatch, team deathmatch, and then the kind of traditional war zone mode that you'll have seen in Killzone 2 and 3, which is like the five rounds that cycle, and you know ultimately it's the, the, the team that's collected the most points across those different game types. Um, so I think actually there's, there's quite a lot of depth there within those maps and, and gameplay experiences. And you guys also have a really interesting sort of collection mechanic in multiplayer where there's this sort of these ace cards or there are cards that you can collect by yeah, killing yeah. enemies and it kind of turns into this meta game. I mean, tell me a little bit about that. That's our ballast system. Basically, we wanted to kind of come up with this thing where you, anyone could be king for a day or, or ace for a day. Uh, because it, you know what it's like when you, you're playing a game and you're looking at leaderboards, but there's some guy who's always put in like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours and sits on the top and you're never going to get there. But maybe within a day, you could be at the top. So actually the ballot system is a way of awarding the player a rank depending on how they're doing uh, and you can collect other people's valor when you when you kill them and kind of complete your suit of cards and your deck and then you know that gives you more points and you kind of unlock stuff so it kind of adds a little incentive too to go after some of these guys who are yeah. terrorizing yeah, you in exactly. these matches you, know, yeah. you can see who are the best players and it's like that positive reinforcement and you know one of the things i like too i did i did try a little multiplayer here on killzone mercenary and again as i think there's a very thoughtful game this isn't just sort of hey let's just take killzone pump out a quick vita one we're done move on the way multiplayer is structured with the vanguard yeah. i thought was very interesting because we've seen a lot of multiplayer shooters they have these kill streaks and kill rewards and things like that so the guy who's doing the best is getting to Even inflict more. the most amount yeah. of punishment this game kind of turns it on its head a little bit if you're actually if you're not as great of a player you can kind of hang back from the fray and, th and that's that vanguard will slowly build up yeah, and yeah. you can kind of you can kind of slink around in the shadows and then do like the porcupine or call in aerial strikes, things like that. Talk a little bit more about how that works in multiplayer. I think it's a really, it's a really astute observation, actually. It's, um, I think well, that's thank what, you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're welcome. Um, I think it's one of the cool things about the vanguards. They're all very different, and that combined with different armor types as well. So we've got uh, like combat armor, or there's a mercenary armor that gets you extra money for every kill. Mm. Um, there's a supply armor that gives you more ammo and stuff. So you combine that with the different kind of gameplay styles that the vanguard items offer and you're actually starting to really hone your character and your loadout specifically to how you want to play. So if you want to hang back, you can, and you can still get a rich experience, particularly if you combine that with your mate who wants to rush in and you're offering support. You know, so I think we, we wanted to look at allowing the player to customize the game, both in single and in multiplayer, depending on their gameplay style. And I love that it's unified across both of them. I mean, that's perfect for mobile. You can. When you don't, when you aren't around a Wi-Fi connection, you can sit around, you can you can rank up, you can get money that you can then spend in the exactly. multiplayer yeah, and yeah. vice versa. So I, I, you've worked on this game for a while now. I, I want to ask yeah, you. Yeah. It's a question I ask a lot of people. What are you personally most proud of with Killzone Mercenary? I think when you kind of touched at it right on the start about people mistaking it for kind of two <laughs> or three, I was I was lucky enough to be at the Sony press conference on Monday night, and it was 
on the big screens there before the show, kind of a live demo. So it was cutting between, you know, PS3, PS4, and then to this. And it held up and it looked really good. And was like, you know, that's, that's a testament to the guys who've worked on it and all the effort that's been put in that it can be on this massive projector and still look good. I think that really says something about how good this game looks. No, no, I mean, yeah, it's, again, that, that native resolution, and the, and the PS Vita is a very high native resolution, that is not easy. I know my graphics technology is a bit, not as well as you, but when you're pumping out high resolution images like that, you typically are taking a massive hit in one area or another. You gotta yeah. strip a lot of other stuff down. That's why a lot of guys don't do it. They wanna lavish all the details yeah, in there, sure. so they say, ah, scale that down a little, it's cool. This game, though, it's kind of no compromises. It's got it all. I mean, it really, I, I encourage everybody to see this thing in action. Hopefully you're seeing it right now. And we're, we're you know, just see it in action because you've never seen anything quite like this. It's a very pretty game. So yeah. I think uh, I think we're about out of time. Okay, great. So it's great to have you on the show. And uh, stay tuned for more PlayStation Livecast. Thanks very much. <laughs>